I wanted to thank you, each one of you, to be here, to join us in this uh, lively discussion, and also for a chance to win our uh, beautiful Murano glass vase signed by Schiavon. So please don't forget to leave your business card before you leave uh, for a chance to win, and the winner will be announced live tomorrow at 1 p.m. on Instagram. So for those who are not familiar with Cosodich Interiors and Antiques, we have two locations. Our boutique Paris has always been specialized in vintage, one-of-a-kind Italian design pieces. And here we have introduced a customizable contemporary collection as well. But we have a mix, so we still have a one-of-a-kind vintage, the modern collection, and today, few pieces of uh, antiques to present. Uh, be also because uh, everything began in uh, Italy, in Arezzo, in uh, uh, 1982. Arezzo, if you don't know, is the city where uh, Roberto Benigni filmed La Vita è Bella, the winner of an Oscar. And uh, so uh, everything began there in 1982 when my husband, because we have family business, husband, wife, and daughter, Sarah. And uh, uh, Franco began as an antique dealer. So our expertise and our experience in antiques is a little bit the reason of uh, this discussion, because we have questions to ask uh, to our guests. We have here three acclaimed designers with uh, very different background, different style also, but they all have in common a lot of success and great talent. So we have Katie, Katie Lighton. Uh, Katie is uh, very British. She has <laughs> grown up, uh, worked in London. And then she moved here in New York in 1997 and uh, uh, established herself here and made a great name for herself. That's right, yes. Then uh, we have uh, Gabo Cadigan, who has a French-Canadian background and uh, he has uh, grown up in Montreal, worked in Boston and then established himself uh, here uh, in New York in 2001. Then, uh, the, I call Jenny the very American because <laughs> she is 100% American. She grew up in St. Louis and then she established a, a company in New York in 2006. So, we want to know, uh, the, because the market says that uh, antiques are of fashion. And, uh, uh, but there's uh, uh, not one extraordinary interior who is uh, without a statement antique piece. And when I say antiques, I really speak about uh, uh, pieces that are pre-war, not later than 1930s. So could you explain this contradiction? How come that the antiques seem to be out of function, and yet the best interior has an antique piece. George, you must. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please, <laughs> Katie. We want the British opinion. <laughs> okay. I think when really good interiors are the interiors that sort of feel that they haven't been created in an instant, they've been thought through they've been sort of discovered, um, you've put together something that reflects um, your interests, your history, your who you are. So that's where antiques can come in because you can create this sort of very layered, this very um, interesting um, room that's more than just what's in fashion today or what's the hot thing of the moment. It's much more, it's much more than that. They give the room sort of gravitas and, um, you know, much more substance. I, think. I absolutely agree. Yeah. And I always tell my clients it's always important 
to keep in mind that, that you want to make sure that once the decorator walks out the door, that your home actually feels like a home. Yeah. And, and a lot of the things that, that people misinterpret is, is the layering. You know, layering is so key, and you just you touched upon that. And, and I think you can't really accomplish uh, a successful interior unless you, you, you know, address what came before and what, what is to come and reinterpret you know, items that might not be you know, considered to be contextual, but use them in a way in a contemporary setting to give them new life and to give them new meaning and new purpose. Yeah, yeah and also I think that you know, in today with the mass produced furniture industry, there's so much new and contemporary modern you know, pieces that are made in a factory. And I think in order for a really unique and beautiful interior to maintain that integrity, you need to bring in pieces that are unique and that have history behind them and have that character and that personality that you don't find in those newer pieces that are being mass produced. Sure, exactly. I mean, I always say that you know the, the concept of interior design began with a bespoke, you know, the concept of having achieved a certain level of of success that you could actually design your interior to be customized to you. And a lot of the pieces that were, you know, we talked about this yesterday, you know, a lot of the pieces that are, you know, older pieces were actually made for the interiors that they were made for. Yeah. So it was explained to my clients, you know, you can't pass up an opportunity to have a piece that's unique yeah. that you can use. Yeah, and I think that we're seeing, I mean, I think that we've been seeing this trend towards mixing in more you know, vintage, certainly vintage pieces, and now you're seeing more antique, you know, pieces be mixed in by some designers, not all, but you're seeing more of that trend, and I think that a lot of that, you know, there have been articles written, I was just reading Whitney Robinson's editor's letter in, in this issue of Elle, and he talks about, you know, appreciating craftsmanship, and, you know, and I was reading somewhere else about the appreciation of, of folk art, and all of those pieces that are just much older and unique, and you know, the history behind them is just, it's so rich and, you know, so those, it makes a big difference in an interior that, you know, otherwise would look like a furniture showroom. Right, and, all, and obviously we're not, never designing anything in a vacuum anyway, so you can't really turn your back to, you know, centuries of interior design work that came before. I mean, there's a sense of history there. And, and a good interior designer knows how to pick the pieces that, that correspond to, you know, the past, but also are forward thinking and can in, infuse the, the modern. And so. also yesterday I found interesting, Gabo, when uh, we were discussing that uh, actually you said, uh, I like to keep uh, some of the antique pieces uh, of my client. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yeah. Oftentimes, you, you have clients that come to you and they already have, yeah. you know, a roster of furniture that they've inherited or they've had, um, you know, some of it sometimes not so good, you know, the dorm room furniture has to go, but, but most often you find that they have a beautiful, you know, antique, you know, chair or floor lamp or something that, that they just have not considered to be something important. And I think also it's our job to reimagine what they have, right. you know, repurpose it, reimagine it, put it in a setting that suddenly makes it seem like a new and interesting thing as opposed to that old chest I've had for, you know, you know what I mean? It's sort of part of our job is to sort of re-give you life to what, what's there. Um, and um, you, you speak about uh, <coughs> history and you speak also about uh, uh, keeping a, a kind of link uh, uh, and uh, um, we see through some of your work on the screen uh, that uh, in fact uh, your uh, interiors uh, have that kind of uh, um, texture and layer as you say the Caro, but we, we find it also a lot uh, even in your interiors Jenny where you are a little bit more modern so how do you uh, like to incorporate uh, these antique pieces in your work, and why you think is it so important to incorporate them? Well, I think for me it comes down to inspiration. So yeah. you know, any any space that I start with, it, it's always a different story. And uh, you know, sometimes you will find a piece of furniture that really speaks to you and speaks to a space that you're working on, and you feel like an obligation to try and you know convince the client. <laughs> To, to see your perspective. And, and sometimes you're successful at doing that, you know, sometimes you're not. But, uh, but most often, when, when you are, it, it turns out to be a very successful space.
space. You've got to find ways to can you know convince you know, share you know you've got a vision. You've got to find ways to sort of explain your vision um, and show them how to incorporate it. And I think that's another thing: is explaining how to do it because it's it's it's. There's a way to do it, and there's a way that doesn't work as well, but then there's a way that works very well, given the space. So it's all, it's a communication and the sort of, um, you know, explaining it in a way that, that makes sense today, I think. For me, for me personally, um, I, I mean, I have a passion for old things, and, um, and I really enjoy the juxtaposition of the old and the new. I'm a very nostalgic person, so I'm always looking to bring in something that has like some old charm to it into all of my interiors. It's I mean it's a drive for me. Like I can't I can't just do everything new. It's, it doesn't work for me. So and I think that you know what creates that unique interior is that juxtaposition. So I really I truly believe in that. And I always I stand by that on every every work that I do. And plus, a lot of modern furniture takes precedent in historical, you know, what came before. And I, I take clients shopping in the Paris flea market often, and I sometimes drag them there, and they they often remark it. You know, they look at a piece of furniture that might be 18th century, and they're like, "Wow, this is really quite modern in a way." And and you know, really, you, they start to understand that there's there is you know. Modern design didn't just happen. You know, it, it was built up yeah, on history. Yeah. You know, of, of progression of, of language, and you know. It... We uh, we have the question. Oh. It's, uh, <laughs> and and uh, we want question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So from what you said, uh, um, I see that uh, antique pieces are important for the history. They are very important for their uniqueness, and that really has uh, struck me because it seems that uh, uh, without antique pieces, uh, it's more difficult to have really uniqueness, but also to have even more texture, more and more emotions. Also. Right, the drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. drama. Yeah. To create the drama and to create a dynamic interior, you need that juxtaposition, in my opinion, because otherwise it's just. It's it's the same. Everything feels, you know, it's the same as having an interior. You know, I, I have a lot of clients who come to me and say, I have this house full of old furniture and I want it to feel updated. I need to get rid of everything. I need everything to be new. I want everything to be clean and modern and crisp. And I say, but you don't need to do that in order to achieve that fresh quality that you're looking for. It's very, like, it's possible to find that balance between the old and the new and to put those things together and to, you know, curate those, pull those pieces from what they have, their existing antique collections, and, and update them, make the whole interior feel updated, and that's what's going to create that interesting, those are the, those are the interiors that you see published in magazines, or those interiors that feel really interesting and unique and dynamic, um, and it's, you know, sometimes it's not easy to pick them apart and, you know, figure out why it is that makes them feel that way. But the, these are the kinds of things, even even adding like one small piece, you know, one yes. small antique piece in a modern. Yeah, right. exactly. That's surprise. That's surprise. Yes. Element of it can create, control, like, it can literally make, make the difference. Absolutely. So this right. brings me to my other question, where uh, you must have some clients uh, who do not want antiques. So how do you convince them? Because in your work, uh, I see that uh, you really have uh, that uh, um, that mark uh, with uh, history, and uh, your mix uh, in your interiors uh, is very appealing. So, how do you convince them? I I think a lot of the um, a lot of our clients, or a lot of people that I that I personally have been really fortunate enough to work with, have a real interest in art and particularly contemporary art. And I found that a very interesting way to um, make that uh, kind of collection or that kind of work sing in a, in a residential home as opposed to a gallery is to, is to give um, antiques a home because the two together can look so fantastic and so exciting, but they also give warmth to a home that could otherwise look like a gallery. 
So for, if I can explain it in that way to somebody, they might understand it. That might be one sort of grab. Um, is that the question? I'm sorry. I'm just, am I okay? No, no, no yes, 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 exactly. Okay, so it's sort of like, it's like how to explain, that, you know, I think you have to sort of take each client. It's definitely an education it, process. It is, it is yeah. a process, and sure. you sort of have to, um, you know, take each client and each job as a, you know, specifically, and then try to understand where they're coming from, and then sort of find the way through it. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, obviously showing beautiful um, photographs yes. of work that we've done or, or other designers' work is always a great way to point out to clients how it's possible to incorporate antiques um, and, and older items into an interior in a way that feels relevant and, and that feels good to them um, and kind of finding, you know, their comfort zone through showing images of, of other of work that we've done Absolutely. and other designers have done. Yeah, it's very inspiration. Inspiration. It's very inspiration. Yeah. Right, right. And and it's fun I mean, you know, it's funny, I was I was walking down walking to my local coffee shop this morning and I ran into a friend of mine and she said, Can I pick your brain for five minutes? And she opened up her computer and she showed me an image of a living room. And she said, I really want to find, you know, this is kind of what we have going on. And I love the rug in this in this living room, and it was a bunch of, you know, it was kind of room and board by some type pieces, and, you know, the rug was an antique rug. And she said, I really love this rug in here. I, you know, I really, she didn't say that. She said, I really love this interior. What is it about this? I love my room to look like this. And I said, I pointed out the rug to her, and I said, this is an antique rug. So, you know, you have all these newer items, but you have this one older item in here, and there's also a small little antique chest. I said, that's what's making you like this image compared to, let's say, um, an image from, you know, a catalog or, you know, some other, you know, an online image, you know, from some website. So I think that, you know, pointing those out in the images is very helpful. Well, so from what you say, it seems that really the use of antiques elevate. And interior. Absolutely. Definitely. So, and uh, where uh, do you pick up your inspiration to find genuine antique pieces? Well, inspiration for me varies greatly from yeah. project to project, so yeah. it's a very broad question. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, a lot of a lot of my inspiration comes from the Paris flea market, only because I have a connection to that. But, yes. But. Uh, you know, I think that, that sometimes it's really a connection to also the architecture of the space that you're working on. And that, that sometimes dictates to you, you know, what, you know, type of furniture and, and how to counterbalance, you know, that, you know, sometimes you know, you're awarded with a project that's very modern and, and you want to diffuse the modernity of it by introducing a few pieces that do have that, that texture, um, you know, the concept of the layering. These are pieces that are, that are not newly made and have a patina that, that can actually bring a 